uh, Quinn Cook, obviously Mason Plumley, like they have so many weapons, so we have to really be able to guard them on many fronts. You think you're going to be getting uh, Plumley? Uh, yeah, I'll be starting with Plumley. What have you seen from him on video or? Uh, I mean, he's having uh, a career season. I mean, he's averaging about 18 points and 12 rebounds, so he's he's great running in transition. He's a great offensive rebounder, and he's just doing a lot of damage around the basket, and he's a well-improved free throw shooter as well, so it'll be uh, definitely a challenge for me, but something that I accept. Are they a lot different without Ryan Kelly? You know, they're going to be out uh, without him. I think he was the leading scorer possibly when he went out. Are they much different without him? Uh, they're different, uh, just not having that stretch four man to, to really shoot the three. But at the same time, it doesn't make them any less of a team because they just step in at McDonald's All-American in his place and just kind of keep it moving. I mean, they change their dynamics a little bit, and some guys will get a little bit more shots than they probably would before with him being out. But I don't think it makes them any less of a team. Julie, you guys have never been in this position, you know, into the ACC season. What's the excitement like knowing that? I mean, this is a huge. I mean, you, you, you're kind of downplaying it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a huge game. Are kids talking to you on campus and all that? Right, I mean, that? people talk to us about it, and we try not to just get overly excited about it because while this is a huge game and a huge opportunity for us, it's just another game on our schedule. I mean, we have 13 others to play after this in the ACC conference season as well as the tournament, and then hopefully the NCAA tournament after that. So, although this is a big thing for us, we plan on, on doing much bigger things in the future. Is that, is that your maturity talking right there? I think I'm so. sure we have some of the young guys in here answer like that. Yeah, I mean, I've been here, I've been here a while. I mean, I've kind of seen and seen these great opportunities come and go, and it just, it really just depends on how you take it and how you take advantage of it as much as it means to you. Because although it's a great opportunity, if we come in here Wednesday night and don't play to the best of our ability, whether it be effort-wise or execution, we'll be disappointed. And so that's something that we definitely don't want to do. You feel like you guys are on a different level now, where a game like this, yeah, you would think, oh my god. And, and then if you if you lose a game like this, it could all go downhill. But the, the frame of mind of this team right now is it is just another game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we just trying to put too much on it and really go in the game and just listen to what Coach L tells us because everything that he says is true. It, it's become true up to this point. So just to try to be be uh, really precise in our, our execution and our preparation, and I, I think that will help us play a good game. Is that a big uh, message from him to, to not take this game as if it's the Super Bowl? I mean, he says every game is, is of equal importance, which is exactly true. But I think it comes from the guys on the team as well. I mean, me being a senior and being a leader on our team, kind of tell guys that every day, even when coach isn't around, that like we have to execute and prepare for each of these games equally so we can go out and play to the best of our ability. You guys are uh, in first place in the ACC. I only lost three games, 4 no. And I know that the poll came out last Monday. But do you think uh, the fact that you guys aren't ranked is, you know, you know, Miami doesn't have a program like these other schools, and people are still having a kind of wait-and-see approach to you guys, I'm not, you know, nationally. Yeah, I mean, nationally, like, we just, we have a lot of opportunities to play in front of the nation and on TV a lot, so, I mean, I think we have an opportunity to show that what we have, and I, I think that if we just continue winning, that the rankings will obviously come, but that's not the most important thing. The, the most important number to me and to our team is just the wins. How do you describe your game? Uh, really just going out there and being an energy guy, being uh, very relentless, whether it be on the offensive and defensive end, and on the defensive end, really pride myself in being a stopper of their best post presence and their, who produces the most in the post for them. So I really take that job personally, and it's something that I enjoy doing, being able to contribute and help my team win the game. Did you think that you have this big of a role when you came into this season? I would like to have uh, thought so, yeah, but... Obviously, in the beginning of the season, coming off the bench and then Reggie with his injury, having the opportunity to step up and contribute a little bit more. And I think I just kind of took advantage of the opportunity and went from there. Hey, Julian, did you go to the game last year, Cameron? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. uh, you were sitting there watching the Cameron crazies and the mm -hmm. atmosphere. What's something you saw there that you hope the crowd at Wednesday night can, can copy or... You know, yeah, I mean, I hope they can just bring that, that same amount of energy. I mean, obviously, uh, going to Cameron Indoor Stadium, it's a legendary amount of injury to the number of consecutive sellouts they had and things like that. And I just hope that they bring that same energy. And I know they'll bring that same energy and excitement with us being in the position that we're in and the team like Duke coming in to play us. And like I said before, we just really have to go out and, and execute and just play our game and play to the best of our ability. And I think we'll be happy with the results. You ever been through anything like the BC game at the end there with the kids shooting the three shots? And I'm sure you're obviously hoping he misses one of them, but well, you yeah, ever been through I mean, anything? That, like was that? A, that was a unique 
uh, moment for us. I mean, coming out of the huddle, uh, we were all reiterating, don't foul. And then when it happened, having an opportunity to kind of watch a freshman shoot three free throws to tie the game at home, like, I don't think that was a, a good moment for him. I, I know he was very nervous, like, just being on the line and watching his demeanor and the way he kind of went about things. But, I mean, I don't – I think I've been in situations like that before in years past and us kind of being on the opposite side of those close games, but it feels good to be on the winning side. I know you asked about the mood on campus. Are you hearing people talking about this game? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are really talking about it and a lot of people are excited about it. And they even told students to camp out Tuesday night to be ready to, to kind of get in the student section because we are completely sold out. I mean, we expect at least 2,000 or more students who try to get in the game. So I know some people will be turned away, so that they're really telling people to come out early as possible, and they're encouraging us to tell people to do that as well. I mean, does that give you any extra juice to just to think about that? I mean, it's definitely something that you get excited for. I mean, coming to college and playing these big-time games like this, it's, it's something that you think about, like places like Duke, where students camp out days before to be able to sit into the front of the student section and, and for people to have an opportunity to do the same for us really does give you a little more energy. But come Wednesday night, we just hope that they're not too tired from camping out to have that energy for <laughs> Wednesday night at 7. Did you ever see anything like that happen at Miami when you came here? Uh, the camping out thing, no. People coming early and, and kind of waiting for the game uh, is something that I've seen before. But especially with, with Dick Vitale actually having the opportunity to come down here and call the game in Coral Gables, I think it's the first time that uh, he's done that since I've been here. So that's, it gives us a little more extra excitement. They call that Krzyzewski going, Duke. What do you think they call here? That's a great question. I, I really don't know. <laughs> something with Coach L, Larry Nagy, something. I have no idea. But we'll have to find out something about that. I never really thought about it. How much fun do you guys have? Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, obviously winning is fun, but being able to play with the guys that I play with and be with the team, like we're, we're such a family on and off the court. We have a great camaraderie within our, within each other. Like just last night, me, Shane, and Duran just go to a movie, like just do relaxing things, like not really think about the pressure of the moment, but this is what we do. This is what we love to do, and to be around uh, my coaching staff and my teammates is just a great feeling, and to be able to win with them is even better. What you go see? Uh, we saw Gangster Squad last night. Pretty good? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely recommend that. What would you say your best game of the year is so far? Uh, I would have to say just production-wise, Hawaii, and just energy-wise and kind of nobody really being certain at the time of Reggie just going down and how our season will go from that point on with losing him. Obviously, for our team, Hawaii wasn't a great three-game stretch with, with the things that we had to go through, but just like – Hawaii, I really went out there with a, with a great energy and really relentless in knowing that every rebound would be mine, and I really had to uh, help fill Reggie's void. And that kind of like got the mindset correct to get back, knowing you won't have him for, for ACC play? Yes, definitely. I mean, I really wanted to just go out there and be consistent and try to do it on a day-to-day -day basis, not only in games but in practice so my teammates would know what to expect from me when the, when the game came. So just kind of doing that and that being a focus on being relentless and trying to outwork everybody else around me was something I really focused on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.